Okay, we'll do questions together to wrap it up. Yes. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Good question. So the question was, when would I start with the chair sittings first? So when I've done it in practice before is when uh, the child really, really is trip trained. So they absolutely will hold it until an adult takes them. They're a really good candidate for chair sittings a lot of the time. Um, but I, I have to know they're not having accidents all the time. They're really waiting. They're, they've got good bladder control, basically. It's pretty simple. The long way is easy. You know, here's the times, W for wet, T for toilet. It's pretty simple. Um, Katie's got a whole series. For the, for the sh short way, you, the data sheets that, that Katie uses, that we used in the study, actually help, help you keep track of where you are in the process. So they're sort of proprietary data sheets. I don't know any app that does a good job with them. Right, but it, you know it's important to because you're doing thirty, you know, thirty minutes on, five minutes off, three times in a row. P. Now it's twenty-five and ten. Then it's yeah. twenty and fifteen. Now it's fifteen and ten. Now it's ten. You you got to keep track. Where am I? Who am I? After a while, you're like, right, right. Who am I? Where am I? What am I doing? Right. So it's important to have a way of being able to follow that. Right. Yeah, no, no apps, but. Yeah, yeah, no apps that I know of, yeah. Good oh, yeah, question. no, they're eating on the I toilet. I that one, yeah. So were you in the yeah. bathroom. Yes. You're eating in the bathroom, they're eating on the toilet, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Right. Like, like Katie said, the 30, the 30 and 5 period, if they're drinking enough, isn't going to last that long. Yeah. Mind you, then it's 25 and 10, which is almost as bad, but yeah. I mean, it's not quite as bad. Yeah. So the belief is we tried once, we were almost there, and he screwed up, the kid, the, not us. The belief is, is that you just this is impossible. Right. He's so, I think he's ODD as well as autistic. Right, that's right. So now the kid, because he was trained, trip trained, and then stopped, now somebody's labeled him, at least in their head, oppositional defiant disorder. Well, this is a testament to his willpower. Well, you know, either there needs to be a different team in place who doesn't have that belief system, or someone with real authority. Well, <laughs> well, not not me too, because I'm that's not like for hire to do this, yeah, right? That's a right, school. but I mean, but someone with real authority has to come in and say you're wrong. I'm in charge now. Do what I, you know, and build a relationship with the team, mm -hmm. right? And dissuade them from their negative belief system around this kid, yeah. right? And I really, I think we've both seen it's very easy mm -hmm. when when you when you've done. And this is not just about toilet training. When you've done everything you know how to do to teach a kid yeah. something, and it hasn't worked, right? Like literally everything I know how to do, and it hasn't worked, I have two choices. I can say, well, the, the kid isn't able to learn this. Or I can say, I'm not a very good teacher, which well, I, I'm, I've done everything I know how to do. Yeah, I don't know what to do. So I'm, mm -hmm. I must not be a very good teacher. Mm -hmm. right? And what most people will do is they'll say the kid, the kid can't learn it. Sure. Right? Well, and that's not true. Learn, the kid doesn't first. want to learn it. The kid's resistant to learning. And what it really is is I don't have enough instructional technique to be able to figure out how to teach this kid successfully. And I, I, I mean, you know, right? This is what happens. This is, what happens. Right? This is why kids don't learn how to read. We tried to teach him how to read. He didn't learn how to read. I guess he can't learn to read. No, I guess you can't teach him to read. I agree. Right? But I tried to toilet train him. He's not toilet trained. I guess he can't be toilet trained. No, you don't know how to toilet train him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, hello, sorry. I'm always on the kid's side around this. Right? I'll take the rap. I'm the grown up. I'll take the rap for not being good enough as a teacher. But you're not going to blame the kid because that's not fair. Right. Good instruction is good instruction. Right. And the, yeah, you were 
just the, the point about toilet training ever being problem behavior. So mm. I, I, I hear that from people, like he's doing it on purpose. And I, I will, I'll buy that a tiny percentage of the time that's what's going on. The child's really doing it on purpose, but I've, I've never had a referral where that turned out to be the case ever, like never. So, I mean, the fact that the kid would be doing it on purpose, really, like we've been saying all day, it's an instructional problem. Right. And they can unlearn it when the reinforcement goes away. But no, happened, so that's. What happens also is that the kid got the wrong idea because the reinforcement went away, so I guess you don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, so kids, it's, kids, it's very, way. you know, yeah. especially kids with autism spectrum disorder. You know, mm -hmm. these kids get a really bad rap. People think, oh, they're so, they're, 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 they're well, you know, it's, it, they don't learn very well. They're, di they're, they're th actually, that's not true. Actually, they learn very well. They learn exactly what we teach them. They learn exactly what we teach them. So if he learned, you know, okay, I pee in the toilet, you reinforce me, I pee in the toilet, that's fine. Now you've stopped reinforcing me. Well, I guess that must mean I don't have to be in the toilet anymore. That's what he learned, right? So who, who's got the problem? The kid? The kid's just going like, well, let's see, reinforce, pee in the toilet, reinforce. Now you're not reinforcing anymore. Oh, I guess that means I changed my behavior too. Right? I've got the problem. I'm the teacher. Right? So, I mean, kids get misrules, right? Yeah. It's one of the biggest things we deal with mm -hmm. is the misrules that kids have learned. Okay, so why did that happen? Because he thinks... He thinks he's supposed to go in a diaper. Very good. <laughs> so would you then, even if he was angry, put him back on? I would. Yeah, yeah. you need to get some pee in the toilet. Like even if you hold him over it, like pee needs to go in there. Right. That, that's the first step, no matter what. When, I think you asked a question earlier and I, I really meant to talk about it, so sorry to hijack. Um, you were asking, was it you who asked about a two-year-old yeah. and instructional control? Because instructional control is one of my favorite topics. And I, yeah, I've had a lot of the time, so my main work that I, well, my main work is toilet training. My secondary work is early intervention, so I work a lot with kids in kind of full-blown early ABA intervention programs. And oftentimes, a family will hire me that has a three-year-old or even a two-year-old, which is great, um, and say, yo, toilet training expert, great, let's do it today. And I often say, let's wait six months, because if a little bit of, so instructional control is kind of an ABA lingo mm -hmm. term, but mm -hmm. it's essentially that the kid has learned if I do what you say, good things will happen. So if they've got that connection made, the toilet training goes faster and easier. So if, the, if you have instructional control with the two-year-old, great. Or if you're, if you're starting a program or there's other skills you're working on with a child, sometimes it's good to solidify that and then go into toilet training. Um, but anyone can be toilet trained is, is still the punchline. So you don't have to wait for those Well, and the, the other thing that waiting does yeah. is it allows it allows the kid to experience many, many opportunities where he, where he's reinforced yeah. for uh, for for appropriate behavior, yeah. and also to establish a relationship with the therapist. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. It's it's uh, some of this comes out of the relationship, mm -hmm. right? So waiting is not necessarily a bad thing in yeah. that regard. There's a trust or like right. a oh yeah. okay well, like an expectation. Yeah. Oh, I know you. You're the yeah. one who delivers. Yeah. You, right? got, you got the chocolate. Yeah, right. exactly. Right? Yeah. You're the one who delivers. Yeah. Right? I, I can't wait for you to show up. You deliver. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the fading of the reinforcer is, again, a very individual thing, right? You, you know when you've got the kid, because he's really dry, right? And after a while, and, and he's, and he's self-initiating. Right? I mean, now he's self-initiating. And after a while, I, I think you get an affective change from, from I usually do see, see it in many people, where they're just like, they don't even need the reinforcer anymore. Yeah. They're just like, it's, so it's, it's not a big deal. In the beginning, they're like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where's my iPad? Where's my chocolate? Where's my, you know, blah, 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 right? It's all about that. And then after a while, it's like, oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, oh, I forgot. Chocolate chips. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's like not that important. And at that point, you can start fading. But you don't ever want to, if you're worried about fading, the worst thing that happens is you don't fade very quickly. 
the reinforcers, that's okay. I'd rather you took your old sweet time and didn't, didn't go very quickly than that you went too soon and you lose the behavior after all that hard work, right? That, yeah, they, they, kids very often forget to start asking yeah, to, to ask yeah, for it yeah, afterwards. Yeah, and yeah. also, when we talk about prerequisites and things, like we say, oh, patooey, those prerequisites like being uncomfortable in a diaper and not liking being wet. It's funny, very often, even though the kid didn't care about that before toilet training, he, he across cares. the yeah. course of the intervention, when an accident happened, it's like, oh my God. Whereas six weeks right. ago, he could care less. My pe like it's so, it's a funny how it, over time mm. it's like this isn't normal. It was normal six weeks ago. Now it's uh, that's never happening again. I've had lots of kids mm. do that. So mm. I mean, it, it can be mm. less scary than mm. what you think. Mm. But it is. It's really if you're if you're worried about anything, that's a good place to have mm. your like thinking about reinforcers. Is, mm. Yeah, huge. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, uh, 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 that reminds me to come back to the question that you asked before about the kid who says, oh, I had an accident and kind of wants to engage you in dialogue about mm -hmm. that, you know? Uh, as Katie said, that's not, I mean, that's not a good time to have dialogue. Have dialogue when he pees on the toilet. How proud you are of him. Look, you can pee just like daddy can. You know, wow, this is so great, blah, blah, blah. This is what big boys do. Read them stories about, you know, people who pee in the toilet. But around the accident thing, <laughs> It, it really is important to stay neutral because if that's how he knows he can engage you in a learning interaction, then you're going to get more accidents to get that engagement rather than more peeing in the toilet. So engage all you want around the toileting and be a great teacher for him as when he pees in the toilet, right? Like that's when you want to engage. I don't know, two weeks, but I mean, I'd cer certainly if, it, certainly, you know, oh boy, it's something really exciting's going to happen. We're going to, yeah. we're going to get you out of those diapers and you're going to be able to get, you know, SpongeBob underpants eventually and oh boy, and this fun things and mm -hmm. wow. And you know, and you want to rev them up a little bit for a couple yeah. days ahead of time. That's fine. But it, it being positive is important. Yeah, really. Like that, I, yeah, I had one family, I'm, just as you're saying that, I remembered, um, that they said, "Your Katie's gonna come toilet train you," and like I knocked on the door, and the kid was like, oh, "I don't want to be toilet trained." So like it was, it wasn't in the context of it being a good thing. So it, it, you know, presenting it like it's their choice is kind of just like, uh, yeah, like Pat saying, super positive. A really great thing's gonna happen. We're gonna get you underpants. Um, and that's, there's no harm to be done there, but yeah. some kids do get panicky about yeah. it and. Yeah. Like, who's Katie and all that, and yeah, yeah so. Uh, yeah, no, it's, you, you gotta pump them up. Yeah. yeah. Good question. It's a chair sitting thing. Yeah, it sounds like it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to know without seeing him, of course. Okay. Disclaimer. But, I mean, potentially it's an initiation issue where something like the chair sitting would be good. Um, potentially it's, you fading yourself out of the bathroom, like oh, you stand right beside him. I don't even go to the oh, okay. Bathroom. Oh, you're out of the bathroom. She just has to give okay, him verbal permission. Okay, you just have permission. to go. Okay, yeah, sounds like a chair sitting yeah. thing. Yeah. Any muddy around initiation stuff, the chair sitting clears it right up. So it sounds like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a penalty. Mm -hmm. The short version. Yeah. Well, remember, remember, she's not going to have accidents. Yeah. She's not going to have many accidents. She's spending most of her life on the toilet. She certainly wouldn't have 15. But I mean, we, it wouldn't, it would just take too much time out of it for the shower. So there'd have to be some sort of a, like wipe down situation. Because I understand with older kids, yeah, you really don't mm. want to let them sit and pee or poo. So um, yeah, I'd have to look at it. But it's, I mean, they did actually in that original Azra and Fox study, they showered. So it's, it's just something that's kind of been faded out of how it's done yeah. in practice because over the years, you know, different researchers have kind of figured out what were the really essential parts of that mm. and what weren't. But I mean, that's my Bible. I can tell you to do what's in there. So I, it's possible. It would depend a lot on the case and the child, but. 
But but again, remember, if you yeah, do go the short route, much. it's not going to happen very much at yeah. all, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that that's the beauty of the short route is you don't have a lot of accidents. Yeah. I mean, the other thing I think it's fair to say in case you go out and buy the Azrin and Fox and start reading it and going. What yeah. the heck is that? Azrin and Fox not only did showers, but mm -hmm. they also used a punishment procedure called overcorrection, mm -hmm. where when the kid had an accident, they had this whole sort of procedure where the kid had to wash out his clothes and put it in the washing machine. <laughs> Katie doesn't do that. We didn't. She didn't do it in the study. Most, you know, those kind of more aversive, if you will, procedures aren't done as part of sort of modern, current, contemporary toilet training. Mm -hmm. But if you buy the Azrin and Fox book, some of that's in there. So don't be shocked if you buy it and go, liar, liar, pants on fire, <laughs> you know, or think that somehow Katie just, oops, forgot to tell yeah. you about that part, right? Yeah. Um, it's just, it doesn't have to be part of the procedure. And it's because there's been enough research since 1971 to kind of figure out what are the really important pieces here. And the really important piece is the reinforcement piece, not the punishment piece, mm -hmm. which is good for all of us, I think. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to say. OK, so thank you for saying that. I finally remembered. It takes okay. me a while. You know, it's the, it's the age thing, right? <laughs> So uh, this about the dribble about the aluminum. Oh, yeah, right, pan. yeah, right. What the pan. How could I? How could I let oh. these people go without telling you about the aluminum this is, roasting pan? This okay. This is the price of admission. Yeah, this now. is the price yeah. of admission. Okay, so uh, those of you who are dealing with dribblers, right, or small amounts at one time, one of the things that's challenging about those people, kids, adults, whatever, is that if, if they're going just a little bit at a time. As Katie said, it, whether it's in the long way or the short way, you want to be able to hear that they're going so you can reinforce. Remember, P hitting toilet equals reinforcement. You want lots of opportunities to reinforce. But if they're only going a little bit, especially if they're girls, where often the urine will literally hug the side of the toilet bowl and you can't hear it go in the water, you don't know that it happened. Does that? OK. So. Here's your little oh. trick. This is only special people get this. This is Pat's aluminum roasting pan trick. Okay? Get go to Safeway. Well, I don't care where you go, but go to Safeway. Get yourself a small aluminum roasting pan like you would roast a turkey, a small turkey, a very small turkey, or a chicken in, right? You know, and that that's a, a throw-out aluminum roasting pan, like made out of aluminum foil only with you know what I mean, right? OK. And mold it so it fits inside the toilet on top of the water. OK? Now, and, and as close to the sides as possible, right? So it's just sitting on top of the water, kind of, you know, right? Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Now when the urine hits, it really makes a loud noise, OK? Which lets you know that it, the urine hit. And often for the person, especially people with, you know, who have some auditory sensitivity, right, whatever, not in a bad way, in a good way, it, they'll also hear the P hitting the aluminum roasting pan. And now when you get excited, you're, you know, you're like, oh, 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 and they're hearing tinkle, 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 tinkle. Right? It helps them make the connection between what am I doing that's making her so happy and why did I get the reinforcer? Does that make sense? Right? This is, I always like say, keep this one in your back pocket because you may not need it. And if you don't need it, it'll save you a few bucks. And then, of course, after each pee, you empty out the aluminum roasting pan, wash it out, put it back in the toilet. Right? But it's a good way to kind of make peeing m more auditory, more more apparent. And it's especially good for folks who dribble. Have you used it? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. please. Oh, you used it with one of the kids in the study. Yeah, yeah. That's right. One of the kids in the study had this. And yeah. the mom called Katie and said, I can't tell when he's peeing. She said, have I got a deal for you? Get the pan. Yeah. <laughs> Get the aluminum roasting pan. Yeah. It worked, right? It yeah, worked like a it's charm. a good one. Yeah. It's really, and it's like, yeah, those kids who don't seem like they are making the connection. Yeah, they don't look like they know when they're going. Because yeah. lots of kids, just the feeling when they first pee on the toilet, they look down. Other kids, like, they can be peeing and just like, doo 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 on the iPad, and yeah. you're going, then the pan's good. Because it is really so loud. Yeah, it's really Even loud. Even a dribble is so loud that they kind of, what? 
Twat, 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 yeah. twat, 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 twat. <laughs> it's rain on a tin roof. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, roof. it's on a tin roof. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the other thing, I mean, again, you know, if you if you're there, there's other tricks as well. Um, one of my one of the other ones for boys who are standing again, I my both of our preferences sit to sit because yeah. you get the poop then often. But, you know, there's, there's ways to make it more fun to stand as well. Um, float Cheerios on the water and he has to pee the Cheerios like little targets, right? Or get happy faces and float them on the water and now he has to sink the happy faces. You know, right? I mean, it's weird. I know, it's weird. <laughs> weird means we're almost done and it's time to go because now we're getting into weird. Yeah. Well, it's not too late to switch to well, sitting. That was my question. Yeah. He resists it. He mm -hmm. resists it a lot. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually, it's a physical struggle to get him to turn around it and sit down. You, you had the standing, standing pooing. Challenge. Yeah, he has the Sorry. standing pooing kid. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be worth, it'd be, woohoo, get yeah. a shirt. Yeah. It'd be worth to talk to your behavior consultant and say, look, maybe we need to have some pre-stuff where he learns to sit on the toilet yeah. for longer and longer intervals. Start with one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, until he's comfortable just sitting there. He doesn't have to do anything, right? And then you've solved the pooping problem, and now you can start all over again with the peeing, and now you've gone peeing and pooping at the same time sitting. No, I, I'm saying I would, I, I would think seriously about stopping, get him sitting, start all over again. Mm -hmm. Unless you're so far down the road that, you know. I think in the end it'll be worth pushing through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk, I mean, you, you're working with a behavior consultant. She can help you with that. Right. Again, some of this is very technical stuff. I know Katie and I both kind of appreciate, you know, all we can do is say general things. If you're, um, if you're not sure, find somebody, find a behavior consultant, find somebody in the community who can support you so you put together a really good program so you can be successful. We want you guys to be successful as much as we want the people who you're training to be successful.